hey, guess what? Today is Soap Sunday. Today is the day that we get to hear what God has been speaking to you about in, in, in your devotional time as you've spent time with the Lord. And I know you've heard me say this over and over again, but I, I love this Sunday because I get to hear from you. I get to hear what God is speaking to you about. So who would like to begin this morning by coming and sharing a soap with us? Come on, Jen. She, she was trying to let somebody else step up, but nobody did, so she's coming. Let's try to be a gentlewoman. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. Okay. I'm reading out of 1 John, chapter 3, verses 18 through 24. It kind of goes with what was said this morning about love. Beloved children, our love can't be an abstract theory we only talk about, but a way of life, demonstrated through our loving deeds. We know that truth lives within us because we demonstrate love in action, which will reassure our hearts in His presence. Whenever our hearts make us feel guilty and remind us of our failures, we know that God is much greater and more merciful than our conscience. Are you reading out of the Passion, or? This is Passion. Okay. Mm -hmm. Passion. <laughs> we you have to start that over. Now. Let me start over. No, it's fine. Okay. Uh oh. Okay. Sorry. We know that God is much greater and more merciful than our conscience, and He knows everything there is to know about us. My delightfully, <laughs> my delightfully loved friends. When our hearts don't condemn us, we have a bold freedom to speak face to face with God, and whatever we ask of Him, we receive, because we keep His commands. And by our beautiful intentions, we continue to do what brings pleasure to Him. I'm on verse 23 if you're looking for it. <laughs> so these are His commands, that we continually place our trust in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and that we keep loving one another just as He has commanded us. For all who obey his commands find their lives joined in union with him, and he lives and flourishes in there them. Is, there is. We know and have proof that he constantly lives and flourishes in us by the spirit that he has given us. And, and the good news is actually came up this morning. God loves us first, and then we can love each other. And so that, that's the good news. So it's not based on our own goodness. It's not based on our own drumming it up. He gives it to us first, and then we release it to each other. So observation. Actions speak louder than words. We need to hear from God what love looks like. Love starts with compassion in our heart. Um, and then we pray and have concern and active listening and understanding for every person that we're interacting with. And God thinks that every human is a valuable treasure. So we need to start thinking that way. That every person is a valuable treasure, a gift that God gives to the world. Um, the other part of the scripture I love is we don't need to punish ourselves and others. If you ever sin, he, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from unrighteousness. And so it's, it, if you happen to sin, we're not, we're not sinners anymore. We're sinners that are saved by grace. And we used to sin, but now we don't because the Holy Spirit helps us not to. But if you happen to sin, you run to Father and say, Lord Jesus, <laughs> please forgive me. You confess our sin. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. So we don't have to have a bad, uh, unclean conscience. Our love and obedience keeps us joined to him, which is really wonderful. I'm going to brag on my brother. I don't know where he went. <laughs> Dave Larson. Uh, he took Daniel and I out to lunch when Danny was here. And I was, pretty, I was pretty amazed at him. I'm always pretty amazed at him, actually, because he does love a lot. He's very generous, very giving, very uh, concerned about people around him and we were sitting there having a good conversation and the waitress came up and she's doing a good job and he like heat sickening missile just went right to her and greeted her and and you know asked her name and was very friendly to her and she just came up with something that was going on at home the next day she's concerned about and had me pray for her <laughs> so I prayed for her 
And she went off and did other things, and then all of a sudden she comes back and he does it again. And he, he starts to speak into her life things about her destiny and how God loves her. And just, you know, just like, wow. And he, so he's very, very much supporting us and very, very much aware of her at the same time, giving her love and encouragement. And you can do that all the time. You can walk like that. That's really actually what ministry is. And all of us can do that. Do you show concern to somebody? Uh, that's given love in, in God's name. So, that was the action part of it. Let's go ahead and pray. Lord Jesus, I just ask, would you go ahead and put your hand on your heart? Lord, I ask that you baptize every person in here in the Father's love. You loved us first so we can love others. Lord, I just ask that you baptize your children in God's love. Let them know how valuable they are to you. And as we overflow in God's love, I ask that you help us to love each other that way. Help us to even love strangers that way. Ha. I love you, Lord God. We exalt your holy name. Help us to put our trust in you. Help us to walk in love and obedience. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Who's next? That's why I was reaching. I didn't want you to, tri you to trip. Okay. I am so nervous. So this is a combination of testimony and soap. So it's not going to be in the right order. <laughs> um, about two months ago, I got in my car to go run errands. And because I've been so busy, I don't start my prayer time until I get in my car. Because I do a lot of driving. So as I put the key in the car, Holy Spirit said, do not start the car, move this car until you put on the armor. And it's like, I thought this is different. And I looked at the key and he said it again. He was very adamant. And I've never heard him talk to me like that. And I looked at the gear shift and said, okay. So I put on the armor. I, put the car, I turn the car on. I flip a Yui. And I'm out in College Place behind Walmart. And I go to get on the freeway to head into town. And I notice that by the time I get to town intersection, every word that came out of my mouth was scripture concerning my protection. He is my protection. So that part of town, I had three errands, and it was noontime, so traffic was busy. This car jumps through traffic, thinking no one's there, and I'm there. That car would have landed in my lap. My coffee mug, that one doesn't fit in the holder, so I had my hand on my coffee mug, because I've spilt so much coffee. And the other hand on the steering wheel like this, not grabbing it, but like this. And I got out of the way. I got pushed clear over almost into bricks, the, up on the curb almost. The peace of God was so thick. No heart palpitations, no anxiety, no fear. Just like, wow. Nope, the car behind me saw it and just backed off. I didn't plan on going up ninth. I planned on going someplace. Well, I got pushed over that way, so I had to go that way. I said, Lord, do I follow this girl and let her know what happened? Because she didn't see me. And tell her that her angels and my angels were really busy a few minutes ago? Or do I just pray for her and go about my day? I think I was stuck in that lane because I just kept moving. And I prayed for her the adamant voice of Holy Spirit. So since then, I was blessed with some divine appointments in Tri-Cities, and I got the tail end of a spiritual warfare conference. And the guy used three trailers or three movies. One was Transformers, one was Avengers, one was Pacific Rim. But it was all about putting on your super suit. 
And in that teaching, I got some answers about territorial spiritual warfare that I've had because of what I experience. So it was a really good weekend. The pastor read the armor out of the, the Passion Translation. And it is just so meaty. But I'm going to read this. So all of this is observation, activation, <laughs> scripture. Putting on the armor is putting God on. We get to put him on. And sometimes we got to cinch it up a little tight. But it's all good. <laughs> now, my beloved ones, I have saved these most important truths for last. Be supernaturally infused with strength through your life union. Life union, intimacy with the Lord Jesus. Stand victorious with the force of his explosive power flowing in and through you. Put on God's complete set of armor provided for us so that you will be protected as you fight against the evil strategies of the accuser. Whether you want to believe it or not, it's real. It happens. But he's good. He's so faithful. He's your covering. You, uh, your hand-to-hand -hand combat is not the... Uh, of Your hand-to-hand -hand combat is not with human beings, but with the highest principalities and authorities operating in rebellion under the heavenly realms. For they are a powerful class of demon gods and evil spirits that hold this dark world in bondage. Because of this, you must wear all the armor that God provides, so you're protected as you confront the slanderer. For you are destined for all things with wise and will rise victorious. Put on truth as a belt to strengthen you to stand in triumph. Put on holiness as the protective armor that covers your heart. Stand on your feet alert, then you'll always be ready to share the blessings of peace. In every battle, take faith as your wraparound shield, for it is able to extinguish the blazing arrows coming to you from the evil one. Embrace the power of salvation's full deliverance. You know, pastor set this up when you, I'm going to use the word commanded, our spirits to attention. So I believe Father is saying, arise army of God, come to attention, put on the armor. I'm going to be real, half the time I'm putting the armor on while I'm sitting on the potty. Just because my day is busy. And I got, it's just, when I hear that little voice, do it. Y you know? Just do it. Oh, and Lord, I just ask, I'm going to pray. <laughs> Lord, I ask for a fresh touch over your children's eyes and ears, in the natural and in the physical, and that we would be quick to be obedient. We are your army. We are your children. And you take good care because you're a good father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Good. Put your armor on. Who's next? You know I'm going to preach if nobody steps up here. Uh, how about towards the end? I, I, I want to stay in the flow of, of soaping here, if we can, for just a little bit. But yeah, I'd like to hear that. Make sure that we that that happens. Come on, John and Lou. Good morning, church. It feels like it's been a long time since I've been here, and it has been, actually. Um, I, I'm going to start with Psalm 118, verse 17. I will not die, but live, and tell of the works of the Lord. This verse has been one that um, has been really quite real in my family. 
um, on June, well, actually, I'm going to go back to May. <laughs> um, well, let me go back to April. So starting April 1st, I have been taking my family back and forth to Seattle for um, my dad's chemo treatments. Um, and we were living there anywhere from three to four days of the week, back and forth to the Tri-Cities. And so we had a lot of bumps along the way and we got home um, after having to kind of take a little break from the chemo. We, um, we got home finally on May 30th and we were gonna just be home for a little while again and go back. Um, that was on a Thursday. The next day, my daddy started having non-stop diarrhea and blood loss. And he ended up in the emergency room at Cadillac on June 3rd. And he was in there until June 17th when they decided to transfer him to the UW Medical Center. And so we were over there for another week and a half, I think, in the hospital. So, 16 units of blood later, three units of platelets, and uh, many scans and scope tests, <laughs> we finally found out that there was a small bleed in his gastrointestinal area. And in the meantime, the doctor, his oncologist of 26 years now, no, 24 years, how long has it been, 24? <laughs> 24 years of having stage four prostate cancer, she's out of options for him. And so, is starting to talk about hospice and palliative care at this point. And finally, after having a third or fourth nuclear medicine scan, there is a finally a pinpoint of where this bleed is happening but in the meantime um, the doctors decided to do a little bit more scanning and see if that was because of being a cancer growth in that area so the long story short is that um, just about when the doctors were going to um, go in again this, more, this poor man has been <laughs> at this point he has been on liquid diet and or cleaned out about three or four times in a very short period of time. And um, so we were about ready to do that again, to go in and fix the bleed. And the doctor said, well, you're, you're not going with blood loss. Your blood is starting to stabilize. Your blood loss is stabilized. And um, so in uh, the next day, it was, well, I think we'll just not do this scope. I think your blood is stabilized and we're going to actually send you home. And so home for us was the hotel at the, it, we be, that we live in while we're there. And uh, he came home and the next thing we know, um, his PSAs actually dropped when his chemo had ended on May 13th. He took about a 300 point drop and that was amazing. And he had a visit with his oncologist who said, Roger, you always surprise us. <laughs> and we're thinking, God, you always surprise us. Um, you are stable. Your blood is actually not dropping anymore. And if you'd like to resume chemo, I think it will do you some good. So we were able to come home for a week or so, yay. <laughs> and we start chemo again. But I have to say that the, that's the, the observation is, you know, I ask God, you know, I will not die, but I will live. And I ask God, why is that so true for so many of your servants in the Bible? And why is that not true when I, what I observe? And there's a lot of people here that are on cancer journeys and all sorts of health issues that are even right here in this family. And I'm like, you know, why do I not see this? And what do I have to do to see this? And uh, the only word I got was, you just have to believe. <laughs> in, the, in all the midst of this, my mom was truly having a lot of emotional meltdown, and I don't blame her. She's beat down physically, she's be beat down emotionally, but I refuse to buy into that emotional downward spin. I just refused to borrow that trouble 
And I just had in my spirit that this is still not his time, that God is not done. And yeah, we don't necessarily have instant all total healing, but we have a path to healing and we keep walking that path even though it's not easy and it's not you know fun driving back and forth to Seattle and living there three out of four or five days of the week. But um, it is the journey that he has given us and the path that he has given us and, and it is part of our testimony and so we keep on keeping on. So I will not die, but I will live. And I will tell of the works of the Lord. So that is what I'm here doing, is telling of the works of the Lord. And, um, you know, that it's only <laughs> by His grace that um, we are able to have this victory. And we will claim it as a victory, and we keep on keeping on. So dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much that you are an amazing God beyond, beyond our comprehension. And while things don't always look the way we would want them to look, you are still the mighty God in the midst of it all. And so, Lord, I lift up to you those who are on cancer journeys, that you would just, um, that you would lift them up, that you would uh, gird them up with your strength and with faith, Lord. Faith that you are the God who says that we will not die but live and tell the works of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, gentlemen. Going, going. Anybody have a soap to share? Okay. I, because of how much time we have, I'm, I'm not going to share this as a soap, although it is my soap. But, it, but it, it's uh, Mark chapter 11, verses 22 through 24. And uh, let me just read these verses of scripture and we'll talk about them. So Jesus answered and said to them, and, and Jan, remind me we're going to get that update. Yep. Uh, have faith in God. Yeah. Have you ever thought about those four words? Have faith in God. For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask uh, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. You know, I, I'm on this journey with the Lord where he's given me certain passages of scripture to meditate on. And, and see, when you meditate on, on scripture, you, you have to take the whole passage. It's not just about a verse or two. If you want to extract the wisdom of God, if you want the counsel of God to be released, if you want Lagos to become Rhema, you've you got to be willing to spend some time meditating on that passage. But my soap today actually comes out of what is written prior to this. Now, the, the beginning of Mark chapter 1 is the triumphal entry. How many know what that is? So Jesus entered the, the city of Jerusalem on a colt. Many spread out their clothes before him. Some cut down palm branches and spread them out before him. The people were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David. And it's interesting, after that was over, Jesus went into the temple for just a few minutes, and he looked around. The hour was late, and so he and his 12 disciples left there and went to Bethany. Now, I, I want you to think about that. Triumphal entry, comes into the temple, looks around a little bit, takes off to Bethany, which is a small community outside of Jerusalem. Many think he was maybe going to the house of Lazarus, Martha, and Mary to, to spend the night. Uh, the next day, he was leaving Bethany and heading back to Jerusalem, and he was hungry. Like, like maybe he didn't have breakfast or something. And, and he saw this tree afar off, and, and he goes to this tree with expectation of maybe partaking of some fruit and there isn't any fruit and so Jesus said to the tree you know what do you think about somebody that talks to things 
You know, uh, like he spoke to the wind and the waves one time. He, he, he spoke to things. And so he, he spoke to this tree. He said, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And the disciples, all of them heard it. They heard him say that. And, and uh, the, the point I want, want us to grab is that Jesus spoke to this tree, but nothing has really happened by appearance. So then he went into Jerusalem, into the temple, began to drive out those who bought and sold in the temple. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. He stopped everyone from carrying their wares through the temple. The temple had become like a marketplace. Can you imagine? And Jesus drove out all of that activity. And then he said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. But you have made it a den of thieves. And see, when the disciples and the chief priests saw what he had done and heard what they had said, they, they, they began to plan on how they could destroy him. But they feared the people who were astonished at Jesus' teaching. So in, in the evening, they, they left Jerusalem, probably heading back to Bethany. Now the next morning, as, as they passed the fig tree that Jesus had cursed, they, they saw, the Bible makes note of the fact that, that, that the fig tree had dried from the roots up. And Peter, remembering, said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the tree which you cursed has withered. And so that's the context in which Jesus says these words. He says, have faith in God. For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. So here's my observation. It has to do with the fig tree itself. The scriptures says in verse 20, the tree dried up from the roots. What does that mean? It means that it began the moment Jesus spoke those words, but it couldn't be seen because it was below the surface of what could actually be perceived. It began right then. Even though looking at it in the natural, you could see nothing. It happened from the moment he spoke, but it couldn't be seen until the next day, the, the full extent of what took place. I just want you to think about that. Because oftentimes, when God asks us to, to make a declaration for the kingdom, or God asks us to pray a prayer with expectation, we don't necessarily see what's happening. What has already begun to happen, because we can't see below the surface uh, of those things, and, and we, we can find ourselves, if we're not careful, being moved by what we don't see, even though it's actually happening. Does that make sense? So um, Jesus took that moment, as he often did, as a teaching moment, and he, and he talked with them about the power of words, both in declaration and in prayer. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, that's declaration, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. So that's declaration. But then he pulls in prayer, and he says, therefore... I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. See, when you make a declaration for the kingdom and you believe it, or when you pray a prayer and you believe that you have received, it begins to happen immediately even though we may not see it. It's, it's, it's happening below the surface of what you can see. Things are happening in the spirit realm. And, and as long as I stay in that place of faith, the manifestation will come. The tree will wither. It's happening. You just can't see it yet. That's what Jesus is trying to illustrate to his disciples. 
So here's my application. <laughs> Dude, I need to stop being moved by what I see or feel. If I truly believe the words of Jesus here, if I truly believe the words that I speak uh, representing the kingdom or the prayers that I pray, then it has already begun to happen. Things have already been set in motion, even though it may be below the surface, it may be undetectable, I just need to stay in that place of faith. Jesus said, have faith in God. Some of the testimonies today, believe, just believe. Jesus, one time he said, he said to this man, he said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. If you can believe. Now, I, I, I really feel like God wants to say something to us, and it's this. When you read a scripture or passage like that, be careful that you don't set yourself apart from everyone else and say, well, yeah, I know that works for some people. Or I know some people really seem to have faith. Don't do that. Jesus would not set you up for failure. Jesus would not set you up so that you'll be discouraged or frustrated. Jesus is inviting us into a place of just believing him. Faith, you know, how many have heard faith can move mountains? That's what he's talking about right here. You know, in, in the passage in, in Matthew 21, he, he, Jesus said it this way. Uh, Assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, it will be done. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. See, God is inviting us into a place of really simple faith. It's really like the faith of a child. You know, it, do, you, do you remember being a kid and thinking that your dad knew everything? Do you remember that? We need, need to get back in that. We need to get back into that place. Because like, like I remember the phase of just, you know, my dad knows everything. And I remember the phase of my dad could beat up your dad. And I remember the phase of, well, maybe he doesn't know everything. <laughs> well, actually, he's, things have changed a lot since he grew up. You know, I'm talking about all these stages. But here's the funny part. Then you get older and older, and you realize, man, I'm not going to do anything until I hear what Dad has to say about that. It's like as you get older, your parents suddenly become real smart. And you realize just how much wisdom that they operated in. See, Believe, only believe. If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Cheryl shared that word about expectation. Expectation. Do, do you have expectation? What was it Oral Roberts used to say? Expect a miracle. Expect a miracle. See, sometimes we can become disillusioned and we, we move into this place where we expect nothing. Like I'm just trying to survive. I'm just trying to get through life. I hope I can make it. Well, that's not where you're called to live. You're called to be a believer. I mean, just by the very nature of the word, I'm a believer. I'm one of those people that actually believe God. I'm a believer. These signs shall follow those who believe. I need to stop being moved by what I see or feel. I, I love when, when God describes Abraham and as Paul writes about Abraham in Romans 3 and 4, God just, it's, it's like God just really appreciates people that believe him. 
Jesus made a statement one time. He said, when I come back, will I find faith on the earth? Will I find anybody that actually believes me? But, but Abraham, who against hope believed, like, like, like his wife, wa- wa- let, let's get real here. His wife has gone through menopause. Yeah. Let, let's get real here. We're talking to old people. See, and yet, when, when God describes him in Romans 4, he just said, look at this guy. He believed me, and I count it to him as righteousness. Because he believed me, who against hope still believed. When, when, when the situation in the natural was absolutely impossible, there's no way this can happen, he believed me. I, I really felt like as we began this year that, that, and that's why I asked this question, what do you believe in God for? What do you believe in God for? Because we're believers. We're, we're the kind of people that believe God for things. We don't live normal. We don't live in survival mode. We don't just try to get by until the rapture sneaks us out of here. We, we are believers. We are contenders. We are contending for the faith once delivered to the saints. We are contending to see the kingdom of God manifest in people's lives. Yeah, let cancer come. Let anything else come. We are standing against it. I'm a believer. I believe God. Yeah. Amen. Let's stand up. Jan, why don't you come and give us a quick report? And then we're going to pray. How many want to believe God for something? You know, it's like when we get together, it, it, it should be like, what are we going to believe for? What are, we, what, are, what are we going to see God do today? Like we're believers. Uh, amen. <laughs> well, um, I'm glad you started out preaching like that because this is actually what's going on with Jack and Karina and Kariana. Um, for whatever reason, I was studying uh, the fourth dimension by Pastor Cho, which talks about God anointing your imagination to see what God wants to happen. And a couple of weeks ago, Jack was in the hospital because he hadn't been eating. He's throwing up constantly. And if you go by what you see, it'll attack your faith. And you, if you go by, I love our doctors, but what our doctors say, it will attack your faith. But Holy Spirit was telling me and them something different, that he's not done. That he will live, he will not die. God told me last year when dad was really sick, with God, all things are possible. With your dad, all things are possible. With Jack and Karina, all things are possible. So here we are, fast forward to this week, and we prayed, and we, God was giving me things to give to them because I walked on both sides of that fence, both having cancer and being a caregiver, knowing what that feels like. And God kept giving me these things, and I kept sending them to my text. And we're going to see miracles. Amen. We're already seeing miracles. Here's the first one. Doctors told him he wouldn't walk. He would always have to have a walker. He's walking with a cane. He was walking upstairs when we got him home. <laughs> you know, he was very weak. He started to, um, we started to pray real hard, started to get vision from the Lord, and now he is able to eat. He was eating steak and corn on the cob and something else, and he's eating it, not throwing it up. If he gets a little queasy, Karina lays his hands on him and prays in the Holy Spirit and takes care of it, and he's been eating really well. The other thing's going on is they needed to sell their house right away because the rent was going up, and he's, what, he's upstairs. That's really hard to climb. And uh, Carrie Anna lives in a house across the street, the apartment underneath Cariana became available, and Lord blessed them this this week that the land landlord wants uh, Jack and Karina to live in that apartment. She's actually given them favor, although they don't have income. 
And the other thing is that uh, Karina had to sell her book business. Somebody from Tri-City said, I want to take your books. And they're paying for the shipping. $5,000 for one load, uh, probably another 5000 this week. They took it and they paid for the shipping. So God is blessing them, but I believe he'll be healed. And we're going to see him walk in the store. He'll be up here playing again. Mm -hmm. And I just believe completely that he'll be healed. Amen. See, we can, we can hear about things like that. I don't know. I, I just, I'm excited in my spirit. God wants to show himself strong. He wants to be glorified. You going to lead us in a prayer? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I, I thought he was going to do it. But, uh, <laughs> well, we just heard, we just heard uh, that the word of God is powerful. It's living, right? It's living and it's powerful and it's the truth. And everything that Pastor Dave, everybody that came up here uh, shared a scripture that we can stand on, that we can agree with God and agree with his word, right? So let's put, let, let everybody, let's, let's all hold hands, join hands together across. And we're going to, uh, everybody, everybody. And we're going to, come on Mickey. And we're going to uh, agree and stand, and I, I just saw a picture as, as everybody was talking, and I told Pastor Dave, Pastor Dave, we need to, as a body of Christ, we're going to uh, agree uh, when anything go, like this goes on in the body of Christ with our family uh, or friends or anybody that we're praying for. Uh, and so, uh, Father, I just thank you. I saw a picture of that, how, that when we stand on the word of God and we stand in agreement with you, Father God, and uh, and and uh, and with the truth, with the power of truth, oh God, that your word is running swiftly right now. It's running swiftly, Father God, to these people, Father God, and that your righteous right. I saw a picture of his righteous right hand uh, falling upon uh, uh, against his enemies, every enemy, including uh, premature death and this, uh, uh, the spirit of death that attacks and spirit of infirmity that's trying to come against the body of Christ. So, Father, we just thank you right now that you hear, that you are hearing our cry of our hearts, oh God, Lord, of, of uh, the power of your truth and the power of agreement, oh God. And we are going to stand with you, Father, in Jesus' name, that they will not die but live and declare the works of the Lord, oh God. Father, thank you, Lord. Whoa. Yeah, thank you, God. I, I feel a wave of right now of glory of, the, of God just listening and just uh, uh, honoring our, our uh, prayer, of uh, honoring our prayers. Father, thank you, God, because we honor you. We honor, we honor truth. We honor your spirit, the spirit of God that is, that is falling upon uh, all flesh right now in Jesus' name so that we can go beyond, Father, things that we cannot even think or imagine or even ask, oh, God. And Father, we are thanking you right now, Father, for what you're doing, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Father, you also told us that um, that uh, uh, we heard earlier, too, um, that um, he said that if you believe, you will see greater things than these. Father, we want to see. We want to see you move like you did in, in, in uh, the Old Testament. And now, Father, we have even better and greater promises, a better covenant, Father God, with Christ Jesus and the power of the blood of Jesus, Father God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Continue to hold hands just for a minute. I'm sorry. Continue to hold hands. I, I, you know, there are so many miracles. There are so many testimonies represented in this room. But there are still some here contending. And could we just as a family, as, as, as soldiers together, just stand with everyone that, that's around you? Father, we just, I pray for the person on my right, the person on my left. Father, I pray for those that I'm joined hands together with, that, Lord, we contend for the miracle that they desire. We contend for the miracle that, that they are believing for. We declare that we are unified in one spirit, in one heart. We say, kingdom come. We say, say your purposes be fulfilled God healing finances relationships restoration God in Jesus name we, we agree together thank you Lord amen wow
sometimes the Lord shows us pictures and as Pastor Dave was praying, I saw our father in his great love with his children around him and he had this great big bucket and he was dumping this bucket of the promises of God and the answers to prayers for his people. Mm. It's Christmas Day and the father is giving gifts. Christmas in July.